The 1982 Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix takes place on the 14th and 15th of August around the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. It is now 20 years since kart racing first arrived in Great Britain and in the two decades since its introduction the sport has progressed into a highly complex technical high-speed business with powerful carts and supercarts which can attain speeds of up to 140 miles an hour virtually Formula 3 racing in miniature but only five-eighths of an inch off the tarmac. Today Britain has around 4,000 licensed kart drivers and you don't have to hold a car driving license to have a kart competition license. The beauty of karting is its accessibility to people of all ages and means. You can start karting on your 11th birthday with a new kart for around £500, although the luxury league top 250cc supercarts can cost over £2,500. Racing on full-length car racing circuits like here at Silverstone is restricted to drivers over 17 years of age but young beginners can race on any track shorter than two kilometers. But the main attraction here at the 1982 Hermitite Kart Grand Prix is undoubtedly the 250cc International Kart Grand Prix itself. The supercarts are undoubtedly the fastest and most glamorous carts, which clock speeds of up to 140 miles an hour. They run on water-cooled engines with a maximum of two cylinders and a six-speed gearbox. Using multiple carburetors, electronic ignition systems, and carefully tuned exhaust systems, these machines have acceleration figures similar to Formula Ford 2000 or even Formula 3. The most sophisticated models are aerodynamically contoured for speed. All the engines eligible for 250 national can be used in the 250 international class. Practicing then for the Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix now taking place, there'll be three heats to judge the final grid positions for the Grand Prix itself, the main attraction here at Silverstone. This is last year's winner, John Ball, the GP plates on his zip cart, powered by the very quick Rotax engines. As you can see, the tyres being changed and indeed all the drivers bedding in new tyres in order to get the very best possible use out of them during those all-important three heats. The GP plates on the Zip Hermitite cart, as you can see, are carried by John Ball for one year in recognition of his triumph in last year's event. Indeed, last year's event was quite incredible. They had a six-car dice going for the lead, and John Ball won the race on the very last corner of the last lap, just winning from Reg Gange. Into his Hermitite Zip team cart gets Martin Hines. Certainly giving an international flavour to this Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix is the all-new French Hermitite team, number 54, entered for the driver Michel Troll. This supercart is one of the four French entrants for the Grand Prix. Number 52, the team wins VSD supercart there for Michel Lesgorges. As off it stands comes the zip cart number 54 there, proudly displaying the Hermitite logos. And we can see here how the carts are actually started. These incredible little machines, which we've said before, attain those speeds of up to 140 miles an hour. As in comes David Alves, another French driver, with the Team Wins cart. Caroline Grant Sale, certainly the fastest woman in supercart racing, gets out of her cart. And we asked Martin Hines about the development of supercart racing. Well, supercart development goes on every year, and certainly this year is no, no change. Basically here we have, this is a standard supercar as it's been for the last two or three years. The <coughs> tyres are slick tyres which are the same as Formula One, we have various many different compounds of them. They're super sticky, when you come in you put your hands on them, you can hardly drag your hand off it again. Braking is by four wheel disc brakes, all of which are all hydraulic, they're all ventilated. Fairings as you'll see are designed to get you through the air that much quicker. We have wings on the back and splitters on the side at the front to hold you down on the ground to give you the much adhesion as you can get. Because today, coming through corners at something like 135, 140 mile an hour, you certainly need adhesion. Certainly when the person next to you is maybe half an inch away and there's no room for error whatsoever. However, over the years we are developing and now you'll see from today's racing there's a lot more bodied carts about. 
This one over here has been, we've been developing for something like 18 months, two years now. And we're gradually finalising it up with trimming up uh, trim tabs on the top of it. We've got front and rear wings on it and it's got ground, ground effect sections in the floor tray. The idea is that whenever you get body work and you increase speeds and you reduce drag, you start getting lift because it becomes like a wing, but up the other way. So it's more like an aeroplane taxiing for takeoff. And this sort of thing does happen. So it has to be very crucial the, between the wings, the downforce and everything, because you put too much downforce on, you get too much drag, you lose speed, so you've wasted everything you've done. But <clears throat> hopefully with this one, we, we've just about hit the right balance. You'll also be seeing it later in the racing, a further development of this which covers the driver's legs in, which is something new to karting. That's also giving a problem of, of lift to, to a degree, but hopefully we've overcome it. Um, if we haven't, you'll probably see us disappearing over the grandstand as we come in the woodcut. But I'm sure that isn't going to be the case, and I'm sure today you're going to go on and see some excellent racing. There's going to be five or six drivers that I feel are going to be very hard to beat. We're going to have Leonard Bolin from Sweden, who's just won the Swedish Championships and indeed is going exceptionally quickly. Nigel Smith, he'll be out there with his Rotax powered um, cart. And once again, yesterday, Nigel put in the quickest time of the day. Reg Gange, John Ball and myself will all be driving the new model bodywork, which covers in the legs, which we're going to give that a try, as we think in today's conditions, with the sun shining, that could be the right way to go. I think in the final it's going to be between John Ball and myself. We're on the same team, so hopefully Hermitite and Zip will sort of win no matter what happens. But maybe I'll have the edge on him on the last lap down in the Woodcup. We'll see. See you later. From all over the world, some 350 kart drivers have come to compete in the 1982 Hermitite Kart Grand Prix. They listen attentively to Robert Langford, the clerk of the course, who explains to them how the four-lap heats are going to be run and, of course, the eight-lap Grand Prix themselves. To qualify for the Grand Prix itself is quite a complication because in total you have six heats, but each driver will only compete in the three heats, taking his two best results to count for that all-important grid position for the start of the 250 International Kart Grand Prix. And so to the start of heat 1A, taking the lead straight away in his Zip Rotax is Donovan Coulier, number 87. He's followed by number 65, which is Gilles Butterfield, and the rest of his pack grid going through. Through goes Martin Hines. He's in number 42. Now you might well ask how on earth the grids are determined for the heats. Well, a cart driver will start at the front in one, in the middle in the second, and right at the back in the third. So it's really that all-important aggregate that will bring out his grid position for the Grand Prix itself. Leading the completion of lap one out of those four laps is the Swedish champion, Leonard Bolin. He's followed by Nigel Smith and a gaggle there of other carts. Carolyn Grant in about 10th place, just ahead of Martin Hines, the two Hermitite Zip Team drivers. Coming up well, they have to start from a lowly grid position in that heat. 43, that's Simon Mercer having a few problems of his own. He's the third driver of the Hermitite Zip Team for the 1982 season. At the completion of lap two, then half distance, Leonard Bolin is leading, pulling a well away, but a big battle for second place between Nigel Smith, Steve Starring, and Richard Dean. We look for the Hermitite zip team as they through they come. There goes Caroline Grant Sale, number 25, coming up through the field, now in around about seventh place. But they're all so close together behind the leader here, Leonard Bolin, who seems to be making this heat all his own. Up into second place goes Richard Dean, Nigel Smith, then Steve Styrene, but somebody else has joined in that second place battle. Through comes Martin Hine, Caroline Grant, Sale also going through Martin in around about 10th place. Number 20, yet another Zip Rotax cart, a super cart there for Christopher Gillespie as we wait for the finish of this first heat, and indeed it is Leonard Bowen who wins in cart number 44, the super cart, going very well indeed. Second place snatched by Nigel Smith. Third place is Dave Buttigieg, the European champion. Fourth is Phil Ansell. Fifth is Richard Dean. In eighth place is Martin Hines. And in 14th place, Caroline Grant Sale. We now move on to Heat 1B, the next heat that's going to count for the 250 International Supercar Grand Prix itself. And leading into Beckett's, it's John Ball, the man who won the Grand Prix last year. 
In second place, Rob Kokobin. In third place, car number one, that's Chris Landon. And the rest of this mammoth field going through, everybody sliding a bit through Beckett's. They go out of our sights, down Hangar Strait, around the 2.93 mile Grand Prix circuit, used by all the Formula One Grand Prix staff, but used on this weekend by these amazing little supercars. Close racing indeed, a change in second place is Rob Kokobin, drops into third place in second place, Reg Gange, still leading is John Ball. Smoke pouring then from cart number 54, that's the French Hermitite Zip team cart of the Michel Troll, well down the field at the moment. And John Ball and Rob Kokobin, or is it Reg Gange? Reg Gange and John Ball side by side coming into Beckett's, who will it be? And they almost touch going through, tremendously close racing. You can see these streamlined bodies now on these super carts. Side by side, they're going to go down the long hangar straight. We'll wait to see who is leading as the rest of the field comes through. And that there is number 13. 13 being, that is Charles Eddy, with yet another Zip GT Rotax. But we wait to see who is the leader on the next lap, coming into our view at Beckett's. And it is Reg Gange. Both Reg Gange and John Ball then renewing the battle they had in last year's Grand Prix. In third place, Rob Kokovin. Fourth place is Chris Lander. Richard Arnold going through then in 14th place as we wait for the finalised result and in fact the winner of this heat was indeed Reg Gang. In second place would have been John Ball, he finished in second place on the road but last year's Grand Prix winner was excluded from the results for being two kilograms underweight. So up into second place for that heat will be Rob Kokobin. We move down to Stowe Corner, the end of the very fast hangar straight where the supercarts will attain speeds of around 140 miles an hour. There's a big accident there as they came out onto the straight. There are three or four supercarts involved in an enormous accident. Someone is caught underneath, the rest of the field comes streaming down. That's Glenn George, David Jones and Pete Miles. All three of them collided when, I think it was uh, David Jones went end over end. He's trapped in his car, but the emergency service is certainly on hand and he'll be taken to the medical centre. There are the emergency services as through into the lead looks to me to be John Ball with the yellow flags waving. Second place could be Pierre Stephenson, we're not quite sure. Through goes John Ball. You can see the beautiful streamlining of the zip carts. Everybody battling for positions. The European champion Dave Buttigieg also coming up through the field. The winner of each heat actually scores zero points, the second gets two points, the third three, and so on through the field. The scores for each competitor are added together at the end of the heat, and the competitor with the lowest score wins pole position for the actual Grand Prix. The 57 competitors with the lowest scores automatically go into the Grand Prix itself. The remaining three places on the grid are allocated by the stewards of the meeting. We've heard that uh, the three cart drivers involved in that enormous accident that you saw earlier on are perfectly okay, although David Jones, in fact, has been taken to the medical HQ for observation. So the winner of this heat was, in fact, John Ball, who put a bit more weight on his zip cart and is the winner from Pierre Stephenson. In third place is Leonard Bolin, who won one of the first heats. Fourth place is Chris Taylor. Fifth place, Phil Meads. Sixth place, Rob Kokovin. Seventh place, Denis Maynard, that's in one of the French Hermitite Zip team, and in 30th place, in fact, was the European champion, Dave Battage, who has all sorts of problems and who will retire from this car. Their sponsorship from the European champion, Dave Battage, you can see him there retiring from the heat itself. And so the winner comes round in second place, one for one, Pierre Stephenson, the Swedish drivers. Drivers coming from all over the world to compete in this, the most prestigious supercar event anywhere in the world. As we move on to Heat 2B, as into Club Corner for the first time, it's Reg Gand and Phil Anser side by side. Martin Hines there with the Hermitite Zip Car right behind him in third place. Graham Busco then in fourth place. And the rest of the field coming through. And look at all this. This gives you a very good idea of how close and competitive supercar racing really is. A tremendous sight around the circuit here, the Grand Prix circuit at Silverstone. Everybody jockeying for positions on the opening lap. Into the lead is now Reg Gange. He's pulled away a little bit from Phil Ansel, but Phil Ansel now being attacked all over the place, literally I should think, by that man there, Martin Hines. 
cart number 42, the Hermitite Zip cart going extremely well. He wants to repeat his win that he had in the 1980 race. Number 25 going through Caroline Grant Sale, 35 actually down in 16th place at the moment. Once again, everybody jockeying for positions. If you can imagine that there are going to be 60 supercarts starting in the Grand Prix itself, I think we're in for some amazing racing. First, second and third then, still in first place is Reg Gange. Second place now looks to be Philance Leasley. Taking over third place is Nigel Smith. Nigel Smith from, in fourth place, Martin Hines. Graham Busco coming under a lot of pressure from number 54. Michel Trollet in the French Hermitite Zip Team car. Also going very well indeed. The individual heats being four laps and four laps of really close racing all the way through the field, as you can see. No question about it, international supercart racing is here to stay. First, second now is Nigel Smith. Third place is Philip Ansel. In fourth place is Martin Hines. Fifth place will be David Alves. Sixth place will be uh, Michel Troll. Seventh place, his teammate, Michel Fabre, with yet another Hermitite Zip team cart from France. Stephen Rawson and Paul O'Shea are also battling down the field. And so Heat 2B ends with a victory for Reg Gange, Nigel Smith in second, Phil Ansel third, and Martin Hines in fourth place. So exciting racing scene here for the first four heats, but there are another two heats to come, remember, before the Grand Prix itself. Those next two heats being held on Grand Prix Day, the 15th of August. The attendance, in fact, at the 1982 Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix well up on the 1981 event, so confirming the increasing popularity of supercart racing. The Hermitite Zip team have done quite well. Martin Hines himself has had quite a few engine problems in those first two heats, so he's hoping for a better result in the third heat in order to attain that all-important good position for the Grand Prix held later on in the afternoon. A lot of media coverage for the 1982 Grand Prix itself and the thousands of spectators that have come to Silverstone hoping to see some good, close and professional racing are invited into the pit lane in order to see these amazing little machines at close quarters. The drivers themselves are on hand to explain the sort of racing that supercarts can offer because as we said at the beginning of this television program, kart racing is on the up and up in the 1980s. Before the racing commences itself, the public is invited into the coach trips that are taken around the circuit and Martin Hines goes along with the coach in order to explain to the very interested spectators here all about the way the lines must be taken around the corners, the excitement that makes this type of racing so very special. Mementos of course are all important and they're a good example of 1982 super kart racing because these are the all enveloping bodies, the extremely aerodynamic bodies that give such high speeds to these 250 international supercars. Some very interested visitors from the Stoke Mandeville Spinal Unit, because Jim has fixed it, Jimmy Savile of course has fixed it, for them to come and enjoy a day out here at the Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix. Certainly all of the drivers in super kart racing, realising that the spectator is so important to their sport, there's Caroline Grant Sale signing autographs, Simon Mercer there in the middle of your picture, none of the team members, Hermitite driver there, John Ball, last year's Grand Prix winner, also talking to the public. A very important aspect then of international supercar racing is the attention the drivers and the teams pay to the public, both at the sales site and explain to them all about international supercar racing. In 1983, there's going to be a world championship for the supercarts, very much on the same lines as the Formula One Grand Prix World Championship, and next year's Silverstone race is going to be one of those rounds for that World Series. Yet more proof of the ever-increasing popularity of international supercarting worldwide. We now go to Heat 3A, the first of the heats to be held on Grand Prix Day itself. Some 40 supercarts then lining up for this heat at Woodcut Corner. They're very exciting as they come through. They sweep through the Woodcut Corner without any form of chicane. Just moments to go before the standing start and away then for the start of Heat 3A. Those 40 carts kidding away in a 
haze of blue smoke from those Rotex engines into Peckett's for the first time and it is Gordon Douglas leading with his Zip Rotex car, car number 161, second is Leonard Bolin, number 141, third is Donovan Collier, the first three pulling away a bit, still Gordon Douglas leading, second place Leonard Bolin, the man who won one of the earlier heats, so he's well up for the final at the moment, obviously wants to go out and win this heat to get an even better grid position. In the lead as they come towards Beckett's, it is still Gordon Douglas, but he's really being harried by the Swedish champion, Leonard Bolin. Donovan Collier is still in third place, but the first three are closing up all the while. And a new leader, it's Leonard Bolin leading, but only just from Gordon Douglas in second place. Donovan Collier is still in third place. Richard Dean also going well at the moment, as is Phil Hems. Side-by-side -side motoring through the incredibly quick Woodcut corner without that chicane. And now Gordon Douglas looks to be challenging Donovan Collier. They've swapped positions around the circuit. We'll have to wait to see who is actually leading at the time. That is Simon Mercer, still some way back. I think he's got some form of engine problems. But still leading and very close. We'll wait to see. It's still Leonard Bolin, Gordon Douglas right behind him. The first two having an enormous scrap at the front of this heat. Dropping away a little bit is uh, Donovan Collier. Michel Lesgore's there in the Team Wins Hermitite cart, having a battle down the field. But the European champion, Dave Buffage, having yet more problems with his cart. There, a change of leadership. Back into the lead goes Gordon Douglas. Second place, though, Leonard Bolin. Third place, a change there for third place. I think in the third place now has gone Richard Dean. And an accident there, that is Simon Mercer. Simon Mercer has gone off with the Hermitite Zip Team Cart out of the race. And look at this change of lead there. Into the lead for the last time, the last corner. That was Leonard Bowling who takes the lead and wins this heat. Second place will be Gordon Douglas. In third place will be Richard Dean. And in fourth place, Phil Hems. And Simon Mercer then goes off and won't qualify for this year's Cart Grand Prix. And so to the final heat that will make up the 1982 Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix. The carts are coming out of the collecting area. We've got Nigel Smith, the Reg Gange, Michel Fabre, we've got John Ball, Chris Lambden, Caroline Grant Sale in this heat, as well as Martin Hines. Martin himself obviously hoping to go very quickly in this heat. As you can see, he's starting from the middle of the pack. The carts are being held under the yellow flag. They come out of the collecting area, they'll be held for about 10 seconds when they're all in position. That guy will belt out the way, as you can see. The green lights change, and away they go, and there's someone still trying to get his cart started, but they're off towards Cops Corner. A dangerous time for that competitor there, stuck right in the middle of the field, but in the lead into Beckett's Corner for the first time. It is the French Hermitite team of Michel Trolley as the rest of the field there, everybody battling for positions through Beckett's. Through they go. We wait to see who will be leading at the lap one part mark, quarter distance of the heat. And it is Michel Trolley, cart number 54. In second place looks to be Reg Gange. Also well up there, John Ball. And everybody swapping places. And the Hermitite cart there under a lot of pressure and having been taken for the lead from number 10. Number 10, Reg Gange now in the lead from Michel Trolle. Nigel Smith now coming up well through the field. Reg Gange, Maya Nigel Smith in second place, Michel Trolle in third place. In fourth place now Martin Hines has come up incredibly quickly through the field, up from that mid position on the grid, right up into fourth place, and I think we're going to have Martin Hines challenging for the lead soon. In first place then is Reg Gange, second place still Nigel Smith. Quarter two, Martin Hines with the Hermitite zip cart there, slowing down, he's obviously got some form of problem, we wait for the leaders to come into Woodcut, side by side, Nigel Smith and Reg Gange, still Gange leading, but only just a challenger for Nigel Smith on the inside. Incredibly quick, and someone's gone straight off there, into the barrier, through the straw bales, as we wait for the leaders to come through, into the last corner of the last lap, and Nigel Smith there takes victory, I think, from Reg Gange. Nigel Smith wins, but only just from Reg Gange. 
Third in the team wins French supercar it is Michel Fabre. In fourth place, Gilles Butterfield. Fifth place, John Ball. And in sixth place, Chris Lambden. Martin Hines with the Hermitite Zip Team car, who came up right into fourth place in the early stages of that heat, unfortunately had to retire with engine problems. And so the heats and end and the grids are made up for the Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix, but the very large crowd of people entertained by the pit specials seen here doing their incredible aerobatics. Enjoyment for all and a good day out for all the family here at the 1982 Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix. Precision flying then from the pilots of those pit specials, which are especially designed for this sort of aerobatic work. And so final preparations for the 1982 Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix now underway. GP plates on John Ball's kart will he be able to keep them after this year's race. Bridgestone tyres being used on most of the zip carts. Simon Mercer there, not in the Grand Prix itself, unfortunately, had a lot of bad luck in his uh, supercar heats, but nevertheless, the boss man, Martin Hines, in in third row of the grid, as is Caroline Grant Sale, who lines up on the sixth row of the grid. Number 25, certainly adding a lot of glamour to uh, supercar racing. Reg Gange, he's also gone well in his heats. He's in second place on the grid, on the front row. As you can see, the all-enveloping aerodynamic bodies on Reg Gange's supercar. Number 55 is Dennis Bernard in the Team Hermatite zip car. Everybody waiting very expectantly then for the start of the Grand Prix is number 25. That's Caroline Grant Sales. Hermatite zip team car is literally delivered to her as she walks out to the grid itself. No, that's not one of Martin Hines mechanic praying for him. Martin receiving last minute preparations and Martin will start the Grand Prix from the middle of the third row of the grid. Can he win it again like he did in 1980 when the average speed was 108 miles an hour and last year's average speed for the race was an incredible 111.64 miles an hour. That's when John Ball won the race. So Leonard Bowling in pole position, Reg Gange, Nigel Smith, John Ball and Michel Fabre all on the front row of the grid. On the second row of the grid is Pierre Stephenson, Phil Ansel, Richard Dean, Rob Kakobin. On the third row of the grid will be Chris Lambden and Martin Hines joined by number 18, 76 and 53. Number 25, Caroline Grant Sale is on the sixth row of the grid and the European champion Dave Buttigieg on the eighth row of the grid. So with 60 carts now on the grid for the start of the Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix, the fifth running of the event, Paul Elmore, Steve Starin, Martin Hines and John Ball have all won it previously and they're away for the first of eight laps of power in front of that mammoth crowd lying the pit wall and it looks to me Reg Gange has gone straight into the lead as they lead into Cop's Corner. The whole field getting away cleanly and Reg Gange is in the lead at the moment. We wait to see who is in second place. It's Phil Ansell, followed by Nigel Smith, John Ball, Michel Fabre, Rob Kakovin also well out there at the moment. Through goes number 54, that is Michel Trolle. So everybody going off into the sunlight as you can see. Ideal conditions and Reg Gange has really pulled out a bit of a lead. John Ball in second place leading a gaggle of four cars as everybody literally comes through Woodcut corner side by side on the total limit. Unbelievably close racing here then at Silverstone in the Hermitite Kart Grand Prix. But Reg Gange is pulling away just a little bit. In second place is John Ball, no or is it Nigel Smith? They're having a big battle that could be, I don't know who's coming up well through the field, that's Dave Buttigieg. Dave Buttigieg also coming up right through the field as through goes number 25, Caroline Grant Sale. Caroline at the moment in roundabout 18th place. Reg Gange still leads, John Ball in second place, Leonard Vernon in third place, in fourth place Martin Hines. Then comes Phil Ansell and uh, that number one was Chris Lambden. Through goes Reg Gange, number ten, well out in the lead at the moment. John Ball trying to make up ground in a big battle there for second place. John Ball still in second place, but uh, the Swedish champion also going well, 1-4-4 in third place. 42 in fourth place, Chris Landon now challenging Martin Hines all the way round the circuit as through goes yet more, cart number 55 going through, number 48 also going up well and battles all the way through the field, 
still leading there, Reg Gange. In second place is John Ball. In third place, Leonard Bowling. In fourth place, Dave Buttigieg. In fifth place, Martin Hines. And second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth, closing up for a big battle, I think, whilst Reg Gange is getting away in the lead. No doubt happy that everybody else is scrapping behind him. Through goes the leader, drifting through Woodford Corner. The speeds, I think, now in excess of 130 miles an hour. Looks to me as Dave Buttigieg has come up very well. He was in a lowly grid position, whilst everybody and their mother literally comes around Woodcut Corner side by side, incredibly close here. And look at this battle of second place. Dave Buttigieg has taken second place. In third place, dropping down to fourth place is John Ball, but he's just taking back third place. So Dave Buttigieg coming up very well. It's Bolin, Buttigieg, Ball, the three Bs together. Martin Hines right behind him. Nigel Smith challenging. Chris Landon seems to have gone at the moment as up comes number 40, Phil Ansel. Caroline going also well at the moment. Caroline at the moment in 16th place. As we wait for the big second place battle to come back up to Woodcut Corner. As off goes Steve Lane having a big accident there right into the catch fencing pole. You can see his head literally bounce back on the whiplash. Quite rightly, he runs out the way of the Flying Hornets, the supercarts, who are really battling all the way around the circuit, checked there by an ambulance man. Here it is in repeat, just loses it completely and wax very hard, as you can see, wax the pole, one of the catch fencing poles. Reg Gange coming through, almost a five second lead now, well clear of a second place battle. Buttigieg looks to be in second place. Martin Hines there moving up into third place, has taken John Ball. Richard Dean now challenging Martin Hines, Phil Ansel still there, as is Leonard Bolin. Bolin dropping to the back at the moment of that queue for second place. We've now got seven or eight cars scrapping over that all-important second place. Still, it's Reg Gange coming through all by himself. He must be very lonely up there. And second place looks to be still uh, Nigel Smith there challenging Martin Hines for fourth place is in second place is still Dave Buttigieg. John Ball has gone through into third place. Positions changing all the time, all the way around the circuit as we go into the last lap and the last lap for this man who finished second in the Kart Grand Prix last year, lost his lead on the last corner, the last lap to this man who at the moment is in second place, John Ball. Dave Buttigieg is in third place. Martin Hines is fighting to stay in that fourth place because he's being challenged at the moment by Phil Ansell. Down hangar straight they go as we wait for the lead to come into Woodcut for the last time and wins the 1982 Hermitite British Kart Grand Prix but who will it be in second place? Rage Gange wins but in second place is John Ball last year's winner. In third place is Dave Buttigieg, the European champion. In fourth place right behind him is Martin Hines. In fifth place is Phil Ansell. Sixth place is Richard Dean. Seventh place is Lennon Bowling. Eighth place is Steve Styrene. And really quite an incredible battle for second place. And there is Dave Buttigieg congratulating a very happy man. And that is Reg Gange, who will take those all-important GP plates for the next 12 months until we come back in 1983 for the next Hermitite Kart Grand Prix. So a very exciting race, especially for second place. And we asked Martin Hines, a man who leads the Hermitite Zip team, to talk to the race winners of today. Well, there we are. <laughs> By now you'll have seen the 1982, it is, yeah, 82 British Kart Grand Prix. And there's the winner, Reg Gange, in a runaway victory. Um, had a superb day. What does it mean to you, Reg? Um, just makes me very happy. It makes me sponsors very happy. <laughs> Means I may, uh, I might not give up and carry on next year. <laughs> well, look, talking about sponsors, Jackie Merritt here of Vingtoire. Jackie is a sponsor of Reg. And Jackie, surely a lovely super day for you. Must mean a lot to you today. Mm, absolutely fantastic. It's, it's one thing that Martin always wanted to win. It was the Grand Prix, and it's really very, very important. And I'm so pleased. Super, super. That's what Grand Prix are all about. Last year at this time, we were talking to John Ball. John finished second today. Not quite quick enough. What do you think? What was it? What was the reasons? You know, what sort of Grand Prix was it for you? Um, it was. It could have been closer. I need a little bit more engine, but um, I was I was satisfied with that. You were satisfied with second. I'm sure he wasn't really. I'm sure he's been very very polite. 
<coughs> well, there we go. I finished fourth, which I'm certainly not satisfied with that. <laughs> and certainly next year we'll all be back trying to get the old plates off of Reg. Because Reg is, is not true, Reg is not my father. He may look old enough, but he isn't. So, anyhow, we'll all be back next year and we'll all, uh, hopefully you'll have a good race to watch and <coughs> we'll see you soon. Bye.